Hey guys, it's me Paco, and welcome back to Bad Witch Books. Um, today we're going to be going over my 2020 reads, my top 10 of them. And I had a really good reading year. I mean, this year was hectic. But I read a lot of good books, and at least that's a good part. But yeah, we're going to go over my top 10 reads of the year. We're going to do, I have a lot of like cute or sweet ones, at least two at the top, and then the more painful as we get down the ones that hurt hurt me okay but at number 10 we have you should see me in a crown by leah johnson this is so cute it was a really sweet book it's about a girl that runs for prom queen so she can get this scholarship and she ends up starting getting feelings for uh one of the other girls running for prom queen it was really cute really cute really gay and that's all you really got to get me to read it Really sweet. Just like a piece of candy. I felt like just like a good time. I enjoyed this. I was smiling reading it. Wanted to fight like a teacher, but who doesn't? Okay, for the next book, we have The House in the Quillian Sea. When I tell you I wanted to cry at this book, because it was so cute. Like, I went to my brother's room and was like, Alex, this book hurt me, but in a good way. Like, I also cried on the other book. Not cried, but like was emotional for other books and we'll get to that but um this book is about linus he is a social worker but he works with kids with like supernatural powers and things like that and so he is tasked with going to this one orphanage on this one island on in a house in the cruel sea but um he goes there and he finds that one of the kids there is the antichrist yeah but it's just really sweet, like, and you got a bunch of other kids there, like, there's this dragon that, he's like a baby, baby small, like, lizard-sized dragon, and he likes collecting buttons for his horde. And I tell you, my favorite character is, I forget his name, it's like, it's, it's a long name and I can't think of it, but he's basically a slime, like, if you think of, I guess you Monsters vs. Aliens, the slime so basically he's like that, but he's a little kid, and his biggest dream is to be a bellhop. And I tell you, he is so sweet, and I wanted to adopt all the kids. Because then you had like a little, um, she was like a troll, or what, she was a, a gnome girl, and she was adorable. And then Lucy the Antichrist is adorable, and then you have this male, um, MM relationship. It's just sweet and pure. Like, this book is so cute. It's a perfect found family. And like, it's just so... And then you got this guy, he's a wearer Pomeranian. It's adorable. I would suggest to read it. It's really sweet. Okay. Now we're getting back to some of the books that hurt me, hurt me. At number eight, we have Night of the Dragon by Julie Kakawa. Why did you want to hurt me, Julie Kakawa? Ma'am, I didn't ask to be hurt like this. So this is the... <laughs> third book in the Shadow of the Fox trilogy, and um, Shadow of the Fox trilogy is about a kitsune girl, so fox, half fox spirit. She gets this scroll, one piece of the scroll that if you like bring the pieces together on the night of the like special event, you summon a dragon, they'll grant any wish that changes humanity. And then also the other person trying to, one of the other people trying to get the scroll is a demon hunter, and they're just so cute together. And then you got a bunch of like a ronin and like a, sam a samurai, but he's also the prince. Shows up. That may be a spoiler. You didn't hear that. Shh, I don't know what I'm talking about. It is just so good. This is the wrap up. I love this series. I will push, like, if you love anime, I'd rec highly recommend this series. It is highly, like, got that big anime vibe besides it in Japan. Just like it's got a bunch of anime tropes that are awesome. Well done in here. But this book hurt. She wanted my tears, and she got them. I mean, I didn't cry, but, like, you know, the little, like, gangster. Um, one tear drop thrust. Um, one tear white thrust. But, um, yeah, this hurt me. I'm still not over this. I might reread this series, but, like, I don't know because this hurt. Um, this hurt. This hurt, okay? Okay, so another book. I really love this, and the cover is also gorgeous. 
is Slay by Brittany Morris. I this is the only book that didn't come out this year because I, I'm a really big new release person. But, um, this is so good. Like, besides the beautiful cover, this is about a girl. I should know her name. Kira. She is a game developer. Or not a game developer, but she is a, like, I want to say hacker. Coder? I don't know science. Computers. But basically, she created this game, and it is a virtual reality game for the Black Diaspora, I believe is the way, they, the way she phrased it. But it, um, it's just like a safe space for them to play. It's awesome. It's, um, like, it's a virtual reality. It's got cards, and it, it's just an awesome thing she creates. But it's, um, for Black gamers. And a, one of, a, a kid dies because of something in the game that happens in the game. He dies in real life, and it brings a spotlight on her. And, like, since she had done it all mysterious, she didn't, like, she hasn't announced who she is. There's this big controversy going around. And then a hacker gets into the game and is, like, challenging her. And he's also being, like, the hacker is being really racist and stuff. It's just, it was really good. I love the way the video games were used. And, like, the visuals for the battle would be awesome to see. Like, just the way the game's set up. I'm a big, like, I don't play games, but I like watching it. So I like that way. It was just, it was awesome to be described. Got me mad at some points. Like, if you read this book, there's a character you know. If, let me pull it back out. Because, like, also, this book is just gorgeous. But if you read this book, you should know what character I want to fight. Just so disrespectful. But, yeah, no, really good. I loved it. I think it's a really great read. Especially if you're a gamer, I would suggest you read this. Because it is so good. And then also... Pink's my favorite color. Like, come on. Look at it. Yeah. Really great read. Put put this back on. Put this back on. There we go. Okay. So, number six. And I'm surprised it's this slow, but I read a lot of good books this year. Is going to be Blood and Honey by Shelby Mahern. And I got this exclusive Owlcrate edition. So, like, beautiful shimmery edges. Let me show off. Because I don't have anybody in real life that would care. And then also, like, gorgeous. But, um, this is the sequel to Serpent and Dove, one of my favorite books of last year. And it is about Lou, who's a witch, and Reed, who's a witch hunter, who they get married in the first book. And then, like, at the end of the book, shit happens. And basically, this, like, shit just keeps happening. I like this. I know a lot, I've seen a lot of people that love Super and Dove and not like it. And, of course, people who just didn't like Super and Dove in general. But I really enjoyed this. I love the character development our two characters went through. Um, Lou and Reed and how, like, Reed had to accept a lot of things about how he was raised and why it was wrong to think the ways he was thinking. And Lou learning to accept to be okay with herself. And I loved that we got more of the supernatural aspect. Like, we got to meet the Blood Witches, which was really creepy and really interesting. And then we got to meet the werewolves. And apparently there's mermaids in this book. And, like, some god stuff shows up. I mean, the next book's called God and Monsters, so. But really awesome. The ending was painful. Spiritually. Physically. And emotionally. But, um, really good book. I recommend i mean if you didn't like serpent and dove don't read it but if you like serpent and dove check it out i love this one all right next book i have to thank the princess from the castle library because she got me on this book she recommended it i read it it was amazing song of race and ruin oh my god this was so good i can't wait for the sequel but this is about a princess I love it. I can't. I know the boy's name. Karina. I know it was a K. Karina. She, um, her mom dies. It's not a spoiler. It's in the description. And, like, so there's a special event coming up. It's like a contest and whatever. And basically, the end of the contest, her wins and becomes her king. Because she's going to be the queen. Or her main. And so basically, she plans to murder whoever wins this contest. To bring her mom back to that life for some spell or magic stuff. But our other main character, Malik. 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 
is a soft cinnamon bun child character I love. He's not a child, but like, I, he, my child, I would, he was my child. So sweet. He is a, his sister is kidnapped by a spirit. And they're like, if you kill the princess, we'll give your sister back. So he enters the competition to kill the princess, basically. I'm holding it, like, right here, like, you guys can see it. But, um, so he enters the competition, and so basically they're both at opposing sides, and they both don't know it, and they both kind of start falling for each other or something. That's how I, I was recommended the book. I don't know if that's a spoiler or not, but they are drawn to each other. Amazing book. I love the way the world was done with the magic and, like, I'm a Zodiac fan, and there's, like, a, their own Zodiac for this book, which is really interesting. And I thought that was cool. And like I said, the magic is amazing. I know our char our main character, Malik, has anxiety. And I thought that was dealt well with in this book. And just like I said, I, I love Malik. He was amazing. And I like Karina, too. I like how angry she was. That She was just angry. Um, But, yeah. That was Song of Race and Ruin. Highly recommend. Cannot wait for the sequel. The sequel is one of my most anticipated books of the year. Next year. So next is going to be Empire of Gold. But you could this could take the place of all three of the David Bond trilogy. I did not know that I was going to love the David Bond trilogy so much. I was like, this is getting good reviews. I want to read more, more adult books. So let me check it out. And oh god, I got hit hard with just caring about this book series. It hit me. I didn't see it coming. I was just chilling and it just like, oh. But, um, yeah, Empire Gold is really good. I mean, this, the Day of Bud trilogy is really good. It is about a girl named Nari, who she is a con artist in Egypt in the 1800s. I can't, I don't know. Not today, not today's era. I don't know time. But, um... So she's a con woman, but she, like, has these powers that she just says she's lying about. But she basically ends up doing a ritual to con people, but summons a djinn warrior that takes her off on this magical adventure, and they go to the city of Devabod where all the djinn are. And she gets enwrapped in the politics of it. it is, it's got political intrigue so good. Like, I'm not even a huge political intrigue fan. Am I? I don't know. But this is just so good. Oh, I love the characters. I did not know that in the year 2020, I would be wanting to adopt a heavily religious boy who has not one self-preservating bone in his body. But Ali, I love you. And I love Nari. But Ali, I just, you need a hug, a blanket, and some hot cocoa. And then a slap on the back side of your head. Because, you, like I said, he does not have one self-preservating bone in his body. But I just love it. I love it. I love the way the djinn are done in this. And then we get, like, some more, like, element, other elemental creatures. So the djinns are, like, made from fire. And so we get some, like, made from water. And made from, like, air. It's just really interesting. And it all comes to hold in this book. It is so good. I was listening to this on audiobook, trying not to cry at work. I mean, I try not to cry at work all the time, but that's for other reasons. <laughs> but it was just so good. Oh, I wish I could reread it and not know what happens. I listen to the audiobook, so I highly recommend the audiobook. But this was just so good. I want the UK covers, but I'm happy. These are okay. These are still pretty. Like, this is a pretty green. But this is just... You can tell from the rant I did, or I said about this, that I love it. Because, like, I'm getting to my top tops of the year. I love all these books equally, but, like, I mean, the top tops are the top tops for a reason. Okay. Number three. Number three. Is La Petita Petita. The Damned by Renee Adier. The sequel to The Beautiful. And I will not tolerate any Sebastian hate on this channel. Um... Sebastian in this book. So, if you don't know The Beautiful, which is the first book, is about Celine, who goes, flees from Paris. Some shit happened in Paris, and she's got to book it. So, she goes to New Orleans, and she gets enamored in this, like, 
club, the Court de Leon, and in the lead, the like leader or the ring lead, the center of that club is a boy named Sebastian, and he's like this tall, dark, mysterious figure to her. But she, they, they're both drawn to each other, and I love the beautiful. It was so atmospheric. This book is Sebastian's book, though. Like Celine, if you read Beautiful, you know the plot. You know what happens at the end of the bit, and so you're like. We don't gotta go through that, because this book is, like, mainly from Sebastian's point of view, and I love it. I love that Renee Adier takes Sebastian and breaks a lot of the toxic masculinity stuff that he's been enforced to. And you get, also, you really get to meet this, like, found family of, van of I mean, plot twist vampires. I mean, if you didn't know this book was about vampires, it's about vampires, because, like, that's one of the big things from it. But, it, and then you also get, like, more than vampires, you get werewolves, there's fae in the book. But, like, S Sebastian's journey, really, I really liked it. I really liked how he learned, it's okay to feel things. It's okay to not be an ass, like his uncle, all the time. It's okay, and I love Sebastian. I mean, Sebastian. <sighs> I love Sebastian. Um, I think that's all I gotta say about the damned. It was beautiful. <laughs> My joke there. It was damn beautiful. <laughs> I make jokes. I'll be here all week. Um. Okay. Now, book two of my top ten. Now, um, I love these books equally. They honestly they go back and forth between me and my favorite. One book is like legit my favorite of the year. The other book is because I am trash for this author. So, hmm. Um, but yes, Cemetery Boys was amazing. I love it. I loved it. It is amazing. It was written. I felt like written for me. It is because gay Latinx witches is all you had to say. And I was like, I'm here. Um, but so this book is about, let me get what it's about. This is about Yadriel, who is a brujo. He's a trans. He's also trans. Um, he uh, wants to prove that he's a brujo to his traditional Bruix family, but because they're like super traditional and because brujos and brujas have two different powers, they don't know if he'll be able to do the like brujo um, ritual, like be able to go through it. But he does it secretly to prove that he is. And brujos have the abilities to like summon spirits, and so the spirit that he accidentally summons is not the one he wants to summon, is Julian Diaz, the bad boy of school. And he brings him in, summons him, and then Julian's like, hey, I'll leave, because he was having trouble disappearing, if you help me find out who killed me, because he didn't even know he was dead. And they just go on this, like, trying to figure out how Julian died, and then they learn more about each other, and it gets really cute. And it gets really cute. I mean, I said that my cuter books were at the top, I mean, at the, at the beginning of the list, but, like... This is special. And also to see, like, Latinx. So, like, I'm Mexican. I'm Latinx. To see that. Just hit different. And just hit different to see it. Like, just... You're so used to, like, for me at least, like, when you watch TV or you see shows, just hear them say, like, Aunt Pop, um, Uncle, Aunt. But, like, Tio, Tia, stuff I use. And then, like, talking about food and stuff. And, like, it was just so good. I really liked it. It. Like, I don't know what I can say more that hasn't been said about it. It's just really good. I know a lot of people love it, but this, like I said, my fa probably one of my, my favorite book of the year. Because it goes back and forth between um, this and the next book. Like, these books are pretty much tied. Like, they got two different vibes, so they're tied. But I love Cemetery Boys. This, might, this, will, this will probably be one of my top books of all time. One of my top books of all time. It's just so cute. And I love it. And it said, it's got La Morte. One of my favorite, like, entities that I know about. Like, I don't know what to call her. But, yeah. Cemetery Boys. Now, the other book, number one. If you know me, you probably know this book is number one because I say it all the time. I am trash for this author. This is my most anticipated book of the year. My most anticipated book of next year is by the same author. I am complete trash for Smith Sarah J. Mass. Now, I don't want to hear anything about Sarah J. If you are a Cassandra Clare stan, and I love Cassandra, I like her books, I don't love them. 
But if you are a Cassandra Claire, Claire fan or a Holly Black, I don't want to hear anything about how predictable a Sarah J. Mass fan is. Get that. That might be a separate video. But I love this book. I mean, it's popular for a reason. She's good. I like it. Um, this is about Bryce, who she basically finds her friend dead. And then um, she, like, two years later, her best friend and her hit her pack of werewolves, because they're werewolves, she's a um, half-fae Bryce. She walks into their apartment and finds her friend dead. And then two years later, I think, or three, two to three years later, she has to team up with an archangel because... Similar crimes start appearing around the city, and so they're going to try to solve the case. And uh, I'm just Sarah J. Mass trash. This book was really good. I read it like it. I could. I understand why people say it may have been too long. It's a big. It's a big bitch. Um, but I just I read these like crap. I read Sarah J. Mass books like crap. It took me a week to read this. Those last, if you, when you've read this, those last, I can speak English. If you have read this book, that last faction of the book, every five minutes, it felt like I was calling my brother to be like, Alex, it's my brother's name if you, if I never said it. <laughs> it hurts. It's so emotional. But, um, it's just so good. I love our romance. Rune, I love him. Liba. I love Liba. I love our mermaid guy. Can't remember his name. I'm not great with names. We all know this. Um, I'm coherent. It is 1 a.m. if I never said the time. I'm filming this, but I wanted to film it. Um, but yes, no, this is really good. It's got action. It's got romance. She teased us. Sarah Jane Mass knew what she was doing by not putting in as much smut in this book. She knew we were, that that's what everybody was expecting. I'm so ready for uh, the next book in the series. Like, this is a really good series. I, re I think this might be one of her better works. Like, uh, it's just so good. Okay, that's enough about me gushing. But also Cemetery Voice is so good. Like, uh, so that was my 20, top 10 reads of 2020. Let me know what you guys want to, um, what your top 10 reads were, what were your favorites. Um, yeah, so that was, like I said, comment. I said that already. Like the video, please. Subscribe if you haven't and you like me. Um, I follow me on Instagram and on Twitter. Those links will be in down below.